This is lesson 6-2, exponential functions. Our essential question is, what are the characteristics of exponential functions? So the first thing that we're going to look at is we're going to look at equations today and tables and graphs. So this is kind of a summary of what we're going to look at with our starting value, our growth or decay rate, and then what it translates to on the graph. Okay, so the first one is the key features of f of x equals 2 to the x. So what does the graph of f of x equals 2 to the x look like? We can always make a table. So we can make an x, f of x table. And I always like to plug in some negative numbers and some positive numbers. So if we plug in 2 to the negative 2, you're going to get 1 fourth or 0.25. 2 to the negative 1 is going to give you a half or 0.5, 2 to the 0 power is 1, 2 to the first power is 2, and 2 squared is 4. If you're typing this into the, um, like into the Desmos or into your calculator, you're using, like for this one, you would do 2 using that caret key to the second power, and that would give you 4. So you can see these values, we have a y-intercept at 0, 1. And then it asks, what are the characteristics of the graph of 2 to the x? So we have what's called an asymptote. Let me try to write that a little bit clearer. So an asymptote is a line on your graph that you don't always see that shows you kind of the end behavior, the shape of your graph. So exponentials have a asymptote at y equals 0. So if you can imagine kind of a dotted line here at y equals 0 and see how our graph is going to get closer and closer and closer to 0 but never touch it. We can also say this graph is continuous. There is no breaks or jumps in it. And then let's talk about the domain and the range. So remember domain is what can x be. Well you can see that this graph is going to go to the left and to the right forever. So we would say all real numbers. It can be any x value. And then the range is our y value. So it's going to go up forever, but it's not going to be anywhere in the negative part of our graph. So that means that our y values are going to all be positive. So we would say all real numbers that are greater than 0. So positive numbers is our range. Okay, so this right here is super important. So our exponential functions are going to be in the form f of x equals a times b to the x. a is your initial amount. You can also think about it as your y-intercept. Okay, and b is the constant ratio. If b is greater than 1, it's a growth graph, means it's getting bigger because you're multiplying by a number bigger than 1. And if b is between 0 and 1, like a half or a fourth or two-thirds, that's going to be a decay graph. Okay, so for example 3, we're going to write the equation based on the table and the graph. Okay? So the first thing we need to do is we need to identify what is our initial value. So you're going to find that by finding where x is 0. So if I look right here, x is 0 and our y is 4. So that means when we're writing this equation, it's going to be f of x equals 4. And then we need to figure out what are we multiplying by each time. So I need to say 4 times what gives me 12. Well, we know that's 3. 12 times 3 gives me 36, 36 times 3 gives me 108, and 108 times 3 gives me 324. So that means the number inside the parentheses would be 3, and it's raised to the x. So that would be vision for that table. Now if we come over here to the right, um, part b, I don't like to look at the graph. I would rather look at a table. So I'm going to turn this into a table. So my first point is... 0, 128, 164, 232, 
three sixteen four eight. That's probably enough. Okay, so again, I want to write the equation. So I'm going to say f of x equals, I look for the x value when it's 0. So it's 0, my y value is 128. So that's my initial value, my y-intercept, you can see right there. Okay, and then I need to figure out what I'm multiplying by. So notice I said multiplying, and I didn't say dividing. So when we're doing exponential functions, it's whatever number we're multiplying by each time. So if it is dividing, we need to turn it into multiplication. So if you look here, it looks like we're dividing by 2 each time. Well, that's also cutting something in half. So we could say we're multiplying by a half each time. So that means inside the parentheses, we're going to multiply by a half raised to the x. So there's my equation for that graph. Okay, our last example is comparing linear and exponential functions. So it says, Talisha is offered two pledge options for donating to a charity. Which option will increase the pledge amount faster over time? So it says option A is $100 for the first week, and each week after that, the amount increases by $25. So if we said week and money... So to start out with, it's $100, and then it's increasing by $25. So after week one, it'd be $125. Week two, it'd be $150. Week three, it'd be $175. After four weeks, it'd be oops, $200. Five weeks, $225. We could write an equation for this. So this is linear. You notice we're increasing by $25 each time. So this would be y equals... 25x plus 100. Okay, then we can go over here and look at this option. It says $1 the first week, and each week after that, the amount triples. Now, that doesn't seem like it's going to be as much, so let's see how that works. So to start with, it's a dollar. Then after one week, it'd be $3. Then we triple that, and that would be 9. Triple that, it'd be 27 triple that and we get 81 and triple that and we get 243. Well, if you notice on week five, we have more with option B. So option B is going to grow the money faster and that's because this is exponential. So if we wrote an equation for this, we'd say, okay, our starting value is one and what are we doing? We're multiplying by three each time. So anytime you're comparing a linear function to an exponential function, the exponential is going to beat out the linear in the long run. And you can think about the graphs if we have a line versus if we have something that looks like this. You know that in the long run, the exponential is going to be steeper and grow faster than the linear function. Okay? Oh, that's it. Let me know.